There might be a reason for you to have cake with your coffee for breakfast. Yeah, I'm talking about manipulating the timing in which you break a fast. So should you be fasting from morning to morning or should you be fasting from evening to evening? Well, let me save you a little bit of heartache on this. There's no right or wrong way, but we can figure out what works best for us as an individual based upon where our given needs are and where our given kind of vices are. So I'm gonna talk about manipulating insulin sensitivity and manipulating insulin resistance, and also just playing around with our own diurnal rhythms, our circadian rhythms, so that we can get the most out of breaking a fast at a specific period of time. Hey, you're tuned in to the internet's leading performance nutrition and fat loss channel with new videos three times per week. I want you to hit that red subscribe button and then go ahead and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. I also want you to check out Butcher Box down in the description below. That way you can get grass-fed, grass-finished meat delivered directly to your doorstep for a lesser cost than what you'd spend at the grocery store. So you go on the internet, you order your meat, and it gets taken right to your doorstep cheaper than you pay at the grocery store. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about some interesting stuff regarding the timing of your fasts. So the short answer is what we're starting to find is that eating the majority of your calories in the morning may actually be preferable. And this sounds weird because at first you're thinking, well, Thomas is always talking about skipping breakfast and intermittent fasting in general talks about skipping breakfast. Why would we want more calories in the morning? Well, it doesn't have to be that way all the time. But when we're talking about fasting, there just could be some benefit to it. So I wanna start this video off with an interesting little study. Now this was talked about at the Obesity Society Conference. So it's talking about early time restricted feeding. Now what early time restricted feeding is, is simply intermittent fasting with a feeding window in the morning, earlier in the day, early time restricted feeding. Okay, so what this study looked at was it found that participants that fasted from early to mid afternoon all the way through to the morning compared to people that just ate normal meals, ended up having heightened fat burning throughout the course of the night. Even though their calories burned didn't change, they burned more fat throughout the course of the night. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always heard, hey, you wanna make money while you sleep. If you can make money while you sleep, you're winning. Okay, well, the same thing applies for fat burning, right? Like, who doesn't wanna burn fat while you're sleeping? You're not having to do anything, but your body's in a heightened fat burning state. That's pretty darn cool. Okay, now the other thing that they found is that people that broke their fast in the morning and had that early time restricted feeding had a lot more metabolic flexibility. That means that they had a much easier time shifting from carbohydrate metabolism to fat metabolism. We want that metabolic flexibility. We want that adaptation. That shift is what allows us to be, well, metabolically flexible and essentially burn more fat in a lesser amount of time. So a lot of this does come down to what's called insulin resistance. Now, when you first hear the words insulin resistance, you might be thinking type two diabetes. And you're thinking, I don't want insulin resistance. That sounds like a terrible thing. Well, it's all about timing. Insulin resistance isn't a bad thing if we have it under control. You see, insulin sensitivity is where our cells are very receptive to the hormone insulin, meaning they're willing to absorb nutrients very easily. Insulin resistance is when our cells sort of reject nutrients because they're just kind of numb. Well, the thing is, we want our fat cells to be insulin resistant, okay? We want our fat cells to not want to store, but we want our muscle cells to be insulin sensitive. We want them to absorb things so that we can grow muscle, but we don't want our fat tissue absorbing. So this is where we kind of manipulate timing a little bit and we learn some interesting science. So there was a study that was published in the journal BMC Medical Genomics that took a look at our overall insulin sensitivity in the morning and in the evening and just factored in these diurnal rhythms and sort of our circadian rhythm. And this is where things get important with determining whether you should fast from morning to morning or evening to evening. So they found that we're insulin resistant in our fat cells in the morning, but then we're a little bit more insulin sensitive with our fat cells in the evening and the opposite with muscle. So in the morning, we have less likelihood of our fat cells storing fat and more likelihood of our muscles storing nutrients. This is one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of working out in the morning, but I'll talk about that in another day. Okay, and then in the evening, it's the opposite. We're more likely to store fat into our fat cells in the evening, and we're less likely to store nutrients and what we need in the muscle in the evening. Now, again, this is where it comes into just manipulating timing a little bit with our fasts. They found that the genes that affect this, the genes that affect our overall insulin sensitivity, are 25% or more regulated by our diurnal rhythms. So what that means is that just the fact of our body clock existing 
can have an effect 25% or greater on our insulin sensitivity. This is a big thing. So that means like it doesn't even matter what time you fast, just the fact that morning to evening our bodies change. So what we have to look at here is what are you after and what kind of person are you? This is where things get really important. It's all about damage control in some ways. If you fast from morning to morning, when you break your fast, you're going to have more flexibility to eat things that you may want to eat. Okay? Now the reason that I say this is because in the morning, your fat cells are less likely to store fat because they're more insulin resistant. Okay, so if you fast from morning to morning or from early afternoon to morning, you break your fast in the morning, you can get away with eating a little bit more. If you fast from evening to evening, you have to exercise more restraint with what you eat and break your fast with. And I know I'm talking slow here, but I'm trying to really drill this in. Okay, morning to morning gives you more flexibility. Evening to evening gives you more fat burning. So here's what's wild though. We are burning more fat in the morning. So you might be wondering, well, wouldn't we want to fast through the morning if we burn more fat in the morning? The answer is yes. And I know you're confused right now, but let me explain again. Yes, we're burning more fat in the morning, okay? So that means if we do fast through the morning period, like going evening to evening with our fast, it means that we're gonna burn more fat. But it also means that when we do break our fast, we have more of a potential to mess things up. We have more of a potential to have a negative effect that supersedes all the positive effect we got from that extra fat burning. So if you are a disciplined person that can be really strict with your fast breaking strategy, evening to evening is going to be for you because you're going to get the big effect from the actual fat burning state in which you're fasting through. Okay? You're capitalizing on the already existing fat burning state of your body by depriving yourself of food during that period of time. However, if you are someone that likes to have more flexibility, maybe wants to have cake with your coffee in the morning, then you might want to go AM to AM. You see, during your fast, you're not getting as much of a fat burning effect because you're not riding those hormones as much, you're not riding those enzymes. But when you do break your fast, you have less likelihood of spilling over and having a negative effect. So it's like one is the safer route and one is the more accelerated route. So you just have to pick what works for you. Now there are some benefits to each of course. Now one of the things I wanna give you as a tip is to have caffeine with your break fast meal in the morning. And the reason I say that is because caffeine is going to make you more insulin resistant. You can have caffeine in the evening and it's going to make you more insulin resistant in this case, which is a good thing, but you won't be able to sleep. So that's almost null and void. But in the morning, if you have caffeine, when you break your fast, you're gonna make yourself even more insulin resistant. So that means that the food that you do eat is gonna have even less of a negative effect. But then of course it begs the question, don't I want some insulin sensitivity? Like you do wanna absorb some nutrients, right? Well, that's where working out comes into play. So we can talk about this in another video, but let me quickly touch on it here. Working out makes your muscles insulin sensitive. Okay, let me say that again. Working out makes your muscles insulin sensitive. It doesn't affect your fat cells insulin sensitivity, okay? So if you work out in the morning before you break your fast, you're gonna turn on insulin sensitivity for your muscles, which means when you do break your fast, the food that you do eat is going to go into your muscles, but your fat is not going to be receiving nutrients or fat because it's still insulin resistant. So you couple that along with the caffeine and you see where I'm going with this. So to make it very, very simple and to summarize, if you're fasting from morning to morning, you're gonna to wanna to work out right before you break your fast and then break your fast with just some lean protein, some carbohydrates, maybe a little bit of fat and a cup of coffee. Okay, and you're gonna have some more flexibility and then maybe you can have your cake. But anyway, that gives you the overall idea of who should be fasting from morning to morning and who should be fasting from evening to evening. Or if you want, you can be like me and just switch it up and do whatever feels right for whatever frame of mind you are in at that point in time. As always, I greatly appreciate you guys watching these videos. Keep it locked in here for more and I'll see you in the next video.